Uh, well, now we should move on to boron. Now this one we can do together because now we're moving into a new block. So what orbitals? Let's just think about a normal boron atom. What orbitals does a boron atom, what, what orbitals is a boron atom using? Is it going into the C block? Yep. So what orbitals would it be using in total? 1s, 2s, and 2p. Yeah. So this is the P block. And this is in the second row, so it's the 2p block. That's right. There is no 1p. Block. In the first row, there's no p block, right? Hydrogen and helium don't have a p block. The first time we start using p orbitals is when we get to the second row. All right, so now we we'll need to use more space on our paper. So down here, I can put 1s, and then here we can put 2s. And now we're going to have to start using the 2p orbitals. How many p orbitals are there? How many 2p orbitals are there? That's right. So now things are getting more complicated. Okay, so what are we going to get from the overlap of these 1s orbitals? Yeah, he needs, a, he needs plenty of space. Now we're going to start using pi bonds. But let's build that up. What orbitals will we get from the overlap between the 1s orbitals? And this should be labeled? Right. And how about the overlap between the 2s orbitals? Do you guys have your textbooks with you? Uh-huh. Yeah. So, see that they're going to be different for boron, carbon, and nitrogen than they will be for oxygen and fluorine. Um, so let's go through this. Uh, so what have we got so far? We've already done sigma 2s and sigma 2s star, mm -hmm. right? Now, let's think about the overlap between these two p orbitals now. Now, if we, if, when we form an overlap, are we going to, so we're going to form three molecular orbitals here, in a sense, or three, in a sense, three bonds. Are, would we expect three sigmas, or three pi's, or one sigma and two pi's, or two sigmas and one pi? Do you know how many sigmas and how many pi's do we expect from the overlap? The answer is, um, generally speaking, we can only have one sigma overlap, and the other ones have to be pi. You can kind of see that because remember that the sigma overlap Remember now we're overlapping p orbitals. Mm -hmm. Well, here's a sigma overlap between two of the p orbitals. We know this is sigma because it's a head-to-head -head overlap. Here's one of the atoms, and here's the other atom. Now, let's say I was going to draw another p orbital on this atom. How should I draw the other p orbital? It would have to be perpendicular to the first p orbital. A p orbital on an atom is perpendicular to all the other orbitals on that atom. This is an important point about p orbitals. A p orbital on an atom is always perpendicular to all the other orbitals on that same atom. A p orbital on an atom is always perpendicular to all the other orbitals on that atom. Here, this is boron. So this p orbital has to be vertical since this one was horizontal to be perpendicular. So I can draw a p orbital over here as well. Uh, by the way, notice, even though this has two lobes, it's only one p orbital. A p orbital has two lobes, but it's still only considered one orbital. 
So, so far I've only drawn four, um, I've only drawn two p orbitals on this atom, not four p orbitals. Um, now, do these have a side-to-side -side overlap or head-to-head -head overlap? Side -to -side. So they must be forming a pi overlap. Because from the side, they would look like a p orbital. So this is a sigma overlap, and this is a pi. There's also a bonding interaction down here. But that's, even though there's two sources of interaction, it's still just one pi bond. One pi bond between two p orbitals. But there's um, still one more p orbital on this atom, right? Where, where is that? It's like coming out of the Yeah, it's hard to draw, yeah. but is it still possible for it to be perpendicular to the other orbitals on here? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just, it's basically like my chalk, right? It's going into and out of the page like my chalk is. And you can see how that could be perpendicular to say like my finger here or another piece of chalk. So these pieces of chalk could represent the, the remaining p orbitals. The p orbitals on an atom are always perpendicular to the other orbitals on that atom, but they can be parallel to orbitals on a separate atom. So if these two p orbitals are parallel to each other, but they're perpendicular to all the other orbitals on their same atom. We were going to draw that. I don't know. We can kind of draw it like this. We can kind of wedge this to show that it's coming out of the board. And sometimes people draw dashes to show something that's going into the board. So um, that would be the remaining one. And would that be a sigma or a pi overlap? A pi. Because again, they're not head to head, they're side to side. So now we've figured out what types of overlaps can we have between three p orbitals here and three p orbitals here. Would it be sigma, 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 or sigma pi pi, or sigma, sigma pi? Sigma, pi, pi. Yeah, sigma pi pi. There's going to be one sigma overlap and two pi overlaps. And we can see why. There's only room for one sigma overlap, only room for one head-to-head -head overlap. And since the other p orbitals on this atom are perpendicular to the first p orbital, they can't also be having a head-to-head -head overlap over here. OK, so we know these are going to form a sigma overlap. And pi overlaps. And of course, then there would also be anti-bonding versions of each of these. So you're going to have both of those in your in our picture. Okay. All right. Now you, it would be hard to actually predict what the levels would be here. You just have to look it up in your book. So if you look at your book, and remember we're doing here boron, what should be the next lowest level after the sigma 2s star? Um, the pi 2p is that one There would be. pi 2p. And notice how there's two of them, right? Two pi orbitals. We just predicted two pi orbitals from our picture down here, right? And the two pi orbitals are at the same energy level. This is something new. Previously, we've only ever had one orbital at each energy level, but the two pi orbitals are at the same energy level. That kind of makes sense. There's no reason why this pi bond should be at a different energy than this pi bond. They seem symmetrical to each other, so it makes sense that these should have the same energy. All right, and who comes next after this sigma 2p, according to the book? Uh, yeah, if you look carefully, what, what's this going to be? The sigma 2p. Right. No star. Yes. I'm oh. kind of running out of room here. Maybe I should raise these a little. 2p. Um, not exactly what we would expect. Nor previously, we, we kind of normally have thought of sigma bonds being lower energy than pi bonds. When, you, when you're doing valence bond theory, you normally think of sigma bonds forming first and sigma bonds being preferred. So it's kind of surprising that we're having a lower energy for the pi than for the sigma. Uh, we're not going to try to explain why that is. I don't know what the explanation is. We're just going to memorize that. That for some atoms, there's a kind of surprising order for the molecular orbitals here. Uh, that's why they have that table in your book, because you couldn't really predict it ahead of time. So if your instructor expected to know that, you simply need to memorize that table. So we'll keep referring to that. Uh, yeah, and look at that once. Look at your lecture notes to see if your instructor was following the table. And as far as I can tell, um, she was. OK. So uh, that would give us this. Now, um, we must still have the anti-bonding orbitals. Well, who comes next according to the table? Uh, pi 2p star. Right. And how many of those are there? Two. Um, there's two. Uh, 
pi 2 p star, and then finally? Um, sigma 2 p star, yeah. Good. Good. Now this is what I would have expected. Uh, this kind of seems to make more sense uh, in, in some ways. Notice that this doesn't seem symmetrical though with what's down below. It would seem like since we have, since pi is the lowest energy, it would seem like anti-bonding pi should be the highest energy based on symmetry, but that just turns out not to be how it works out experimentally. So again, we just have to look this up in the table. Okay, so we just looked that up in the table. If I had drawn this better, these would be symmetrical with these down here. This distance would be the same as, or actually I'm not even sure if that's true in this case. So don't worry about it. But in case, these should be lower energy than the atomic p orbitals, and these should be higher energy than the atomic p orbitals. Okay. 